What's going on guys, the night before the 2022 NHL Draft, it was a bit like Christmas Eve honestly, and I'm finally bringing you guys my entire first round mock draft, I know I'm getting this in just in time, so without further ado, we'll get right into it here guys, first overall pick, Montreal Canadiens, don't overthink it, make the obvious pick, it's Shane Wright, I know there's a lot of people saying, oh maybe look at Slikovsky, stuff like that, honestly I think it's just people trying to get clicks, trying to get people to read their article, I feel like Shane Wright going first overall is a 99% lock, would be absolutely shocked if he doesn't, Montreal's been looking for that first line center for how long now, so for them to take a winger when Shane Wright's available would make absolutely no sense to me, now I already mentioned his name guys, going number 2 overall, I think it's going to be Slikovsky, really good power forward winger, we're actually complimenting I think Hughes and Holt on a first line perfectly, I feel like that could be one of the best lines in hockey in the future. Now after that pick guys, number three at the Arizona Coyotes taking Logan Cooley. They really need a first line center. Cooley's the best one available after Shane Wright. Very good offensive upside. I feel like he's the perfect pick for the Coyotes. Now after that number four with the Seattle Kraken taking Simon Nemich. I feel like they already got their future first line center in Matthew Meniers. And now they're getting their future number defenseman in Simon Nemich. Easy pick there. Pretty cool too to see two Slovakian players going in the top five this year's draft. I don't think that's ever happened before. And on next year number five, it's sounding like Philly's also going to go defense here with David Jerichek. I feel like that's a very solid pick there. I feel like he isn't quite on the same level as Nemec, but the Flyers want a defenseman here. He's the easy pick. And after that, guys, it's going to be a run of forwards here. And number six, falling into their lap, at the Columbus Blue Jackets taking Matthew Savoy, uh, one of the better playmakers in this draft. Tons of offensive skill. He's a bit undersized at 5'9", but I don't think the Blue Jackets are going to care about that. They're trying to, you know, build up that team, get some skill in there. Savoy, best player available, make that pick. Now, after him, with Ottawa Senators taking Joaquin Kamel, I think he's one of the best snipers in this draft class. Uh, has a great shot on him. I think he'd pair up great with, you know, Stutzla, Kachuk on a future first line, Bastion, Norris, wherever you want to play him. Should really fit the Senators lineup, I think, with all those good young players. And on next year, guys, number eight, we have my favorite team, the Detroit Red Wings. I'm actually going to be at the draft party tomorrow, so if you guys are there too, uh, you know, keep an eye out for me. But I'm not going to change this pick on my last mock draft. I think Steve Eisenman takes Brad Lambert. At this point in the draft, he's the guy with the highest ceiling, in my opinion. I feel like we got to go for him. We need some more high-end skill on this team. I don't want to take the safe pick. I want to take Lambert, who could be a future superstar in this league. And our next up here, guys, the number nine pick with the Buffalo Sabres taking Jonathan Lekermacki. In my opinion, he's just the best player available at this spot. Really good offensive upside. He can play both center and wing. Has a great shot on him. He's a good playmaker. I feel like this is a great pick for the Buffalo Sabres. After that, number 10, the Anaheim Ducks take Cutter Gauthier. He's a guy who's really risen up the draft boards lately. I've seen a lot of people have him as high as the top five, which I think is a bit much. I feel like number 10 of the Ducks makes a lot of sense. One of the better power forward wingers in this draft class. And I feel like he'd make a really good duo with either McTavish or Zegers in the future. And after that, guys, at number 11, the San Jose Sharks. Obviously, new GM there in Mike Greer. Who's he going to take? I feel like he goes for Frank Nazar there. He's another guy with a lot of upside. A bit of a smaller player, but a good two-way game. Has some offensive upside, too. I was really deciding here between a forward and a defenseman. And I felt like, you know what? In my eyes, Nazar is the best player available. So I feel like the new GM, you can't miss on this pick. Go Frank Nazar. And next year, guys, number 12, we the Columbus Blue Jackets. Their second first-round pick, obviously, thanks to the Seth Jones trade. They already took Matthew Savoy at number six, so that was a great pick by them. I feel like they're probably going to go defense here. And the best defenseman available at this point is probably Kevin Korchinski. So, I mean, they make out so good from the Seth Jones trade. Last year, they get Johnson and Sillinger. This year, Savoy and Korchinski. I feel like those are four big-name players to help rebuild this team. Now, next year, guys, number 13, the New York Islanders. So it sounds like they're going defense. After Korchinski, I feel like another guy who's ranked around the same as him is probably Pavel Mintikov. Now, he is Russian. I know a lot of people are going to probably have a fear about drafting Russians right now, but... He's been playing in the OHL. I'm not sure if he went back to Russia or not, but the fact he's already, you know, in the OHL, I think it's a big plus for him opposed to playing in the KHL. And the Islanders, of course, already have a couple of Russian goalies on their team in Sorokin and Varlamov, so I feel like he'll fit in. And after that, guys, number 14, I feel like this pick makes a lot of sense too. Guy who's already played in the city, Connor Geeky, plays for the Winnipeg Ice, stays in Winnipeg, playing for the Jets. This could be really cool, especially if they do lose to Bois. Geeky would be a, you know, nice power forward center replacement. Uh, him and Perfetti as a potential 1-2 for the future of the Jets with, say, Connor Ehlers on the wings. That could be deadly. And our next year, guys, number 15, the Vancouver Canucks pick. And I feel like this guy, depending on who you ask, has either fallen to 15 or this is actually where he should go. I have him taking Marco Casper. He's a solid Austrian center playing for Rogel in the SHL. He's a guy who I feel like is a really safe pick, has a solid two-way game. Not going to, like, light up the league or anything in points like a guy, say, like, you know, Savoy or Kamel might do in the future, but still a really solid all-around player there for Canucks at 15. I think that's honestly really good value at that spot. And finally here, guys, number 16, the Buffalo Sabres, their second first-round pick, and I feel like they already got Lecker Mackey at 9. They're swinging for the fences here. They're trying to rebuild that team. Why not take a guy who I feel like is going to fall due to the Russian status, playing the KHL, 
take Danilo Yurov there. He's a guy who really should have been a top 10 pick, but with everything going on in Russia, if you guys haven't heard about Kaprizov and all that, you know, stuff happening, I feel like Yurov definitely falls, but um, Buffalo probably sees some other teams coming up. We're going to have a second first round pick. Uh, you got teams like Montreal, uh, Minnesota has a couple, Arizona later in the draft. I think they take Yurov here before anyone else can take them, and honestly, even if he, you know, takes a few years to finally make it to the NHL, that's still very good value. Now we're on the second half of the draft here, guys. The National Predators picking number 17. I know they love their defensemen. They haven't taken a defenseman in the first round since 2016. They got Dante Fabro, and I feel like there's a guy available at this spot who makes a lot of sense, and that's Matichuk there. Plays for the Moose Jaw Warriors. I feel like they could definitely use a young defenseman in the future. And our next year, guys, number 18 on the Dallas Stars, taking a guy who just sounds like he plays hockey in Texas, and that's Rutger McGroarty, committed to the University of Michigan. He's a good two-way forward. I feel like this is around the spot he's going to go, and like I said, Rutger McGroarty just sounds like a Texas hockey player, so it's too perfect to pass on. Uh, number 19 there, the Minnesota Wild, I have them taking Isaac Howard. He's actually committed to the University of Minnesota Duluth. I feel like they really like those kind of Minnesota guys. Again, he's supposed to go around this spot. He's a solid forward. They just lost Kevin Fiala. They bring him in, probably makes a team in, you know, two to three years' time. Should be a good pick. Um, after the Washington Capitals at number 20, I have them going with the defenseman here. I have them going with the big guy, Owen Pickering, 6'4", plays with the Swift Current Broncos. Two-way defenseman, can shoot the puck, uh, can play solid D again. Just makes a lot of sense for me at that spot. Now, next year, guys, number 21 pick. I have the Pittsburgh Penguins taking Liam Ogre, and I feel like this is really good value. I've seen some people have him as high as the top 10, but I don't see him quite that high, probably like in the teens or... 21 being a great pick for the Penguins. He's a really good offensive winger who played in the Swedish Junior League, averaging two points per game there. So uh, if you can translate that to the men's league, and then, of course, further to the NHL, Pittsburgh Penguins get a great pick at 21. Uh, next year, guys, 22, the Anaheim Ducks obviously already took Cutter Gauthier at 10. I feel like they're probably going to go defense here. Best defenseman left available is Chesley. He's another guy from the U.S. Development Program. Really solid two-way defenseman. Plays a smart game. Nothing too flashy. You know, just a really poised, solid guy out there. Kind of reading his scouting report. Reminds me maybe of like a Jacob Slavin, but probably, you know, not quite as good. And next year, guys, the 23rd pick. Out of the St. Louis Blues taking Coolidge. Uh, he's a Czech center playing the Czech men's league. Really good skater. Has a great shot on him. The fact he's already playing against men, I think, is impressive. St. Louis Blues, again, I think... Their team, definitely just taking the best player available. They don't care about position, and in my opinion, that is Coolidge. Now, number 24 here, guys, we have an interesting pick from the Minnesota Wild. They just got Howard at 19, kind of similar to what Buffalo did. I feel like they look at who's available, they swing for the fences here, and they go for Miroshachenko. Now, I believe he was just cleared to play about a month ago after being diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma in March. So, he's a guy who I think a lot of people saw going late first round, probably one of the Coyotes' two picks. I think Minnesota, he was just cleared to play. They don't want to get to one of the Arizona picks. They know they'll, they'll probably take him, so they take a chance there. I feel like, you know, Kaprizov would probably love playing with him in the future, so it makes a lot of sense. Now, at number 25 here, guys, the Toronto Maple Leafs taking Snugger Rudd. Uh, he's a guy who's kind of like a worse version, in my opinion, of Cutter Gauthier, both in the U.S. Development Program, both power forwards. I think the Leafs will be happy with that pick. Uh, definitely add some size to that lineup, as well as some skill at the wing position in the future. And next year, guys, number 26 in the Montreal Canadiens, second first round pick. I have them taking Leon Bichel. He's a big Swiss defenseman. I believe he's 6'5". And he was already playing in the SHL, of course. That's the men's Swedish league this year. So I feel like Montreal gets their future first line center and Shane Wright first overall. Bichel there just add to a good young D core. Of course, they got guys like Kane Gooley coming up too. Just kind of help build that farm system, as I feel like they definitely could use another defenseman or two. So nice pick there by Montreal at 26. 27 here, we have the Arizona Coyotes taking Furcus. He's a really solid offensive winger who played for the Moose Jaw Warriors this year. He's a bit smaller, I think he's like 5'9", 5'10", but Arizona, of course, just kind of looking for the best player available, kind of dynamic players who can help them, you know, spark some offense, get some fans in that building. So they get Logan Cooley at three. Maybe he'll play with Ferguson in the future. I feel like that'd be a sick duo. And next year, guys, number 28, I have a really cool pick for the Buffalo Sabres, taking Noah Oslin. This is the round where he's supposed to go. And if you guys don't know, he's actually teammates with Lecker Matthew. Of course, Buffalo take ninth overall, both playing under Garden in the SHL. So I think that'd be pretty cool to kind of reunite those two teammates. Could have them on the line in the future. Oslin playing center, Lecker Mackey on the wing, vice versa, whatever. I know Lecker Mackey definitely had a lot better numbers this year, both on the Niger Garden junior team as well as the men's team. But I think, again, if you have a chance to kind of unite some guys who had some chemistry together, in the SHL, why not do that for the Sabres? Especially late first round pick, that's definitely good value. And our next year, guys, the number 29 pick, I'm mentioning earlier, is taking Nathan Gaucher, or is it Gaucher? I think it's Gaucher because he's from Quebec. Um, I feel like their team definitely taking best player available. Uh, Gaucher is a guy who's definitely fallen down the draft class rankings. Edmonton usually goes for a guy who's kind of 
in the CHL, it seems. So my guess is at 29, Edmonton will take Gauthier, but obviously still a handful of names available. Speaking of which, at 30, you got the Winnipeg Jets, who of course already took Connor Geeky at 14. I have them going defense here. Best defenseman available, I think, is Casey. He's actually committed to the University of Michigan. I feel like their defense isn't too bad, but with, you know, Perfetti, Geeky, 1-2 in the future, they already got Ehlers, Connor. Let's add to that defense. Hellebuck's not too old. Casey makes a lot of sense there at 30. Especially, too, if you look at the defenseman Michigan's developed, you got Rowenski, Quinn Hughes, Cam York, Owen Power, Luke Hughes. Like, this could be a great pick for the Jets. Um, after that, guys, at 31, the Tampa Bay Lightning here take Misar. He's actually another Slovakian player, so pretty cool to see three go in the first round. Uh, he plays the wing. He's an offensive guy. I feel like, again, Tampa... Back-to-back -back cup champs, almost went three-peat there against the Avalanche. They're definitely taking best player available. They don't have a first-round pick for the next two years after this one. And I think, in my opinion, that's Misar. And finally, your guest number 32 pick, Arizona Coyotes here are still salty about missing out on Jack Hughes in the 2019 draft. So they take the other Jack Hughes here at 32. He's supposed to go, like, around, you know, 30 to 38. I think, you know, he's a good player from the U.S. Development Program as well. Uh, he's committed to some school that's, like, a smaller school. So he'll make the NHL for a few years, obviously. Isn't a big deal for the Arizona Coyotes. They get him, they get Fergus, they get Cooley. Just adding a lot of skill there on that offense. So there you have it, guys. My predictions for the entire first round of the 2022 draft, which is going to start in like 24 hours or so here. So hopefully at least get some picks right. And let me know if you guys want your favorite team to draft in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that sub button. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.